Gentlemen, <coughs> I hope you can hear me. My, I have a, a sore throat, uh, but I hope um, that it will suffice for this 20 minutes. The master hand attributions um, are usually done in two dimensions. Um, we are trying uh, since a couple of years uh, in the course of a major project financed by the Hungarian um, funding group for research activities um, to figure out if it works in 3D. I cannot present you now final definitive results um, for various reasons, uh, but at least a few cases and the background where we started and where we got up to now. So, um, first you see here an overall picture of the sculptures uh, decorating the Temple of Zeus at Olympia. These are over life size marble sculptures from the 5th century and uh, they are duly recognized as uh, major works of art. They are pretty well preserved, as you see also in this slide. And uh, nonetheless, they were excavated more than a century ago. And there are some basic questions uh, which are unclear uh, until now. And these are these basic and very simple questions. Who carved these sculptures? Or uh, in singular or in plural, one master or several masters or workshops were active here, and where did they come from? If we cannot answer the first question, some people try to answer uh, by definitive names, um, some uh, deny this possibility, at least we should be able to localize somehow the origin of these masters. At least this is the general assumption. Um, we also have some um, written evidence uh, from the second century AD, so many centuries after the um, production of these sculptures. Um, an author called Pausanias uh, was traveling there and collected some information uh, concerning these sculptures as well, and he named two of them, one for the east and one for the west pediment. Um, nowadays, everyone practically agrees that both are um, mm, mm, false or uh, incorrect. Um, in the case of Pionios, we can more or less guess the uh, origin or the reason for this mistake, uh, not necessarily made by the um, author, but by his informants. In the other case, we cannot even guess the uh, reason for this mistake, but everyone is pretty sure that these names were not active at that time. Uh, at Olympia and cannot be responsible for directing the works um, there, the sculptural works. Uh, just to give you a brief uh, overview of the research history, um, these are the most recent publications uh, concerning the problem. Uh, the first one summarizes the long history of research more than a century up to the um, date, 87. Uh, the other ones propose different locations for the origin of the sculptor. You see the red dots. Uh, they are not very far from each other, but they are uh, distinctly different uh, places on the Peloponnese. Either Olympia, the dot here on the western side of the Peloponnese, or uh, Spartan Laconian artists are um, assumed by Dörig or uh, some Argive. Uh, also from the Peloponnese uh, by Ross Holloway and so on. There are many suggestions. The latest one uh, connects these uh, sculptors uh, with Paros, a tiny island in the Aegean, the last dot here, um, which is uh, quite simple and uh, straightforward suggestion because the marble itself comes from Paros. But that would be a very simple um, um, approach uh, to say that uh, where the marble comes from, necessarily the sculptors uh, must arrive from the same region as well. Um, I show you just this comparison uh, to illustrate the methodology uh, which was usually employed by these studies. Uh, first I showed you the results of these um, studies. Um, the methodology was uh, simply comparing photographs or plaster casts or even originals, um, if somebody is uh, 
um, has a very good uh, memory, uh, visual memory, then can uh, state that um, I see the uh, differences or the affinities between certain pieces of sculptures uh, which are uh, in different collections. But usually you use uh, photographs and plaster casts, uh, compare them, um, and the results are necessarily subjective. Here, these two heads are at the first sight, I think, uh, look very similar. Um, the one from the Acropolis um, um, is equally well known, is also uh, large, not as large as the uh, head of Apollo from Olympia, but they are um, both uh, large size marble sculptures. Um, and even if we admit that they are similar to a certain degree, what does it really mean? Uh, how close are they to each other and uh, does it mean that if the head on the Acropolis was found there, was it also uh, necessarily made by an artist uh, trained and uh, active in Attica or Athens? Or perhaps uh, he could be uh, a foreigner in Attica and only his work uh, was produced there or even transported there. So there is no um, certainty whether the piece uh, which was found at a certain location was also fabricated there and by a local artist. So um, this shows you that uh, the question is quite complicated and um, as I told you at the beginning um, we try to apply the master hand attribution technique developed uh, more than a century ago for paintings for first for Renaissance paintings and then for uh, Greek vase painting um, to apply this method uh, to 3D um, artworks. The two heads uh, shown here uh, have distinct features uh, which can be recognized and as very similar to each other. Uh, small anatomical details, the ears, the eyes, the lips, the nose, uh, the outline of the chin and so on. And because they are so similar to each other, uh, one can be quite confident that uh, the two pieces, the two heads and the two bases were decorated by the same artist. Even if we cannot uh, give a name to him because he didn't eventually uh, sign the vase, we can at least say that these two, piece, these two pieces were made by the same individual. Uh, the picture is not as uh, clear-cut in every case. Um, in some cases, uh, the similarities are not so uh, overwhelming as to suggest uh, uh, the same artist. Then um, the specialists speak about the same workshop. And this is another, yet another uh, problem, how we uh, define uh, these uh, workshops or individual master hands uh, according to the similarities. So um, this worked fine uh, for more than uh, 50 years now in uh, Greek vase painting at least, um, and there were only sporadic attempts to uh, apply this to 3D uh, sculpture, uh, obviously because the um, photographic methods uh, used to record these sculptures um, are also distorting some details and uh, you know perhaps from your own experience if you take uh, two different pictures under different lighting conditions or with different cameras from the same object the uh, resulting pictures can be quite different. Um, and so um, with normal photographs it uh, doesn't work in 3D. Um, a few years ago a Japanese team uh, started comparing 3D uh, mm, details um, after scanning certain um, pieces of sculpture. You see here a, a complicated graph. Um, it is basically um, the illustration of an other uh, century old problem. We have an old text um, stating that three master sculptors of the 5th century were commissioned uh, to produce a wounded Amazon each. And these three names uh, you see below the uh, three drawings, Phaedias, Polykletos and Crasilas. Um, we do not know uh, who uh, sculpted which Amazon, because we have three types of Amazons, wounded Amazons, apparently from the 5th century. And uh, the question was, or the problem, discussed many, many times in the, uh, among classical archaeologists, which type belongs to which name. And, um, Practically, as with the sculptures from Olympia, everybody arrived at a different solution. This uh, Japanese team 
try to compare these anatomical details uh, to each other. And in this way, they figured out, if you look at this graph, uh, you see here the Amazon types, and here uh, two other statues, uh, which we have in um, replicas in um, Roman uh, copies, uh, which uh, certainly belong to Polykleitos, or were copied after famous works of Polykleitos. So they uh, scanned the two works attributed with certainty to Polykleitos, they scanned also the Amazons, cut out these uh, anatomical <coughs> features, the faces and the feet, and then compared them to each other. And what one can see, certain anatomical features um, are similar but have randomly uh, differences. Uh, but the uh, faces uh, of this type uh, correspond quite um, exactly, although the two uh, statues are male and the Amazons are naturally female, but the faces are practically identical, whereas these two other faces have certain differences. So uh, the conclusion was that the uh, Amazon type uh, Sosiclase was uh, sculpted by Polykleitos. So this, is, uh, this was a starting point, and we tried to do the same with uh, original pieces of sculpture. Um, we scanned a lot of uh, them in different museums, and I uh, forgot to acknowledge all the um, museums or collections uh, which were involved. Um, some of them in plaster casts, uh, mainly in, in uh, original. And then we tried to um, cut out again such uh, distinctive uh, features and uh, to compare them to each other. The comparison was made in the following way. Uh, eyes, eyes with eyebrows, mouths and noses were cut out and compared to each other. Um, in this case, uh, we started only with the uh, sculptures from Olympia and tried to answer the question whether all the pieces were carved by one workshop or by different workshops or masters. And therefore, we, uh, fortunately, we have pretty many heads, uh, well-preserved heads with uh, such anatomical features, and we could um, compare every eye to the other, let's say, 40 or 50 other eyes, and to say uh, whether this eye from the east pediment is more closely resembling the other eyes from the east pediment uh, or those ones from the west. And uh, by this uh, principal component analysis, which uh, the results of which are shown there, it uh, turned out that there is no um, substantial difference between the eyes uh, of the two pediments. So uh, if we take only this evidence, the anatomical details, uh, one can conclude that uh, they were most probably produced by the same workshop. Necessarily, we, could, uh, we should check this result with other heads or other eyes, mouths and noses from the same period, uh, but at that time when we uh, did this, we didn't have uh, so many comparanda for this. Uh, but there is another approach, um, complementary to the other one, uh, not to compare anatomical details, but drapery folds. Uh, it was stated uh, in the latest publication that the drapery folds, typically uh, or distinctively Olympian, uh, are closely resembling the Parian um, pieces, uh, most notably this one. Uh, again, you see Paris here. Um, and uh, just to test this, the validity of this assumption, uh, we had fortunately scanned the um, plaster cast of this Athena, and um, we compared its faults uh, also to Olympia, because this one is generally um, considered to be very distinct from uh, the Olympia sculptures or the rendering of the Olympia faults. And how we did this? Um, it was a very time-consuming procedure. Uh, we selected uh, well-preserved faults, um, cut them out of the statues and then uh, tried uh, geometric, morphometric uh, uh, analysis uh, based on Procrustes superimposition. That's not my field and I can just uh, explain the basics of it. You see here a uh, uh, cut through this uh, fold and uh, three landmarks uh, were selected. It's not so easy to select landmarks on folds. Um, 
and uh, the highest and the lowest points were the landmarks and in between them these are the semi landmarks uh, which were um, placed at uh, equidistant between the um, real landmarks and the rest which uh, falls outside its highest points this was simply cut off and naturally we had very um, many faults to compare and such a principal component analysis resulted from it. You see um, the meaning of this principal component analysis. If a point here, um, or if you move from this side to the other, the shallow folds become uh, um, deeper, and if you move from up to down, then the um, center of this uh, depression moves from one side, I think, uh, from left to right. And uh, here again, uh, you see um, one fold was uh, represented by at least 10 or maximum 20 cuts uh, through it. And uh, so uh, resulting uh, graph uh, of this principal component analysis shows uh, the region in this morpho space where these folds or these statues belong to. And now the result of uh, the comparisons. You see here the Olympia figures, not all of them, a few selected ones, but randomly from the east and the west, um, show a very similar um, distribution as the one from Paros, that's here, the Artemis, but at the same time it shows approximately the same distribution as the Asina, which was considered very distinct uh, from a stylistic uh, point of view from the uh, Olympia statues. And again, in 3D where you see uh, three uh, principal components. Uh, you see the three statues or the points generated by the faults of these three statues are uh, not distinguishable just by the colors. You see which one is, uh, belongs to uh, which statue. And the question is what this really means. Um, can we conclude as the um, archaeologists so far concluded that if the uh, rendering of the faults is similar, then um, they should naturally come from the same workshop tradition. I don't think so. It uh, may be simply that they derive from the same period. Um, and to um, show that this is uh, quite possible and uh, plausible, I show another example from the 4th century where we have uh, two pediments again, uh, but in this case we have documentary evidence, inscriptions, stating that these pediments and these sculptures were made by different workshops. And they are all named, one name is missing from the inscription, but the rest is there. And uh, so we, uh, here, we actually have very few heads, so we had to uh, be content with the folds and the fold analysis. Here you see again the same procedure, a uh, short uh, summary of it. And then uh, you see the east pediment attributed by this inscription to the certain Hectoridas is quite the same as the other pediment. Um, and we cannot distinguish uh, according to the folds between the two workshops. They are contemporary. Um, one has to admit they are uh, most probably uh, coming all from Athens, so uh, the similarities may derive from uh, their common origin uh, of these workshops. Um, we have to um, test this again with other pieces which are uh, certainly not Athenian and not made of Athenian marble. So there is uh, still work to be done and I would just conclude by this picture. We are in the state of this year from the East Pediment. We are pondering and thinking about uh, the uh, continuation and uh, how to interpret this data. Thank you very much.